We want to represent the function f of x equals two x times natural log of the quantity one plus x to the power series in this form here. Then we'll compute the first few coefficients of the power series, where c sub two would be the coefficient of the degree two term, c sub three would be the coefficient of the degree three term, and so on. We also want to find the radius of convergence. Notice how the given function does not resemble the formula used here to find the infinite sum of a convergent geometric series. But if we focus on just part of this function first, for example, we want to focus on natural log of the quantity one plus x. Since we know the integral of one divided by x integrated with respect to x is equal to natural log of the absolute value of x plus c, then it follows that the integral of the quantity one divided by the quantity one plus x integrated with respect to x would equal natural log of the absolute value of the quantity one plus x plus c. So notice how the integrand of this integral does resemble the formula for the infinite sum of a geometric series. So we can use this to help us write the power series for our function f of x. But again, we'll first focus on the natural log part of the function, and then if we can write that as a power series, we can just multiply that power series by two x. So from this equation, it follows that natural log of the quantity one plus x is equal to the integral of one divided by the quantity one plus x integrated with respect to x plus c. And now let's rewrite this integrand so it fits the formula here for the sum of an infinite geometric series. So now we'll write natural log of the quantity one plus x equals the integral of one divided by, because we want this to be a difference, we'll write one minus negative x. And now we can write this integrand as a power series, where notice that a is equal to one, and the common ratio r would be equal to negative x. So this would give us natural log of the quantity one plus x equals the integral of the summation from n equals zero to infinity of a, which is one, times r raised to the power of n, or negative x raised to the power of n. Let's go ahead and change the form of this slightly and write this as natural log of the quantity one plus x equals the integral of the summation from n equals zero to infinity. Let's write this as negative one raised to the power of n times x raised to the power of n. And now because our function is f of x equals two x times natural log of the quantity one plus x, we can represent our function by multiplying by two x. Let's do this on the next slide. So again, because our function f of x equals two x times natural log of the quantity one plus x, this would be equal to two x times the integral of the summation from n equals zero to infinity of negative one raised to the power of n times x raised to the power of n integrated with respect to x plus c. Now we'll integrate this power series with respect to x. So this would give us two x times the summation from n equals zero to infinity of, we still have negative one raised to the power of n, but then we'd add one to the exponent of x, so that would give us x raised to the power of n plus one divided by n plus one. And of course we still have the plus c. And now I'll bring the factor of two x into the power series. So we can write this as the summation from n equals zero to infinity of, notice how we're bringing in a factor of two, so we'd have two times negative one raised to the power of n. We're bringing in an extra factor of x, so we'd have x raised to the power of n plus two divided by the quantity n plus one plus c. So again, all this is still equal to two x times natural log of the quantity one plus x. And now from here, notice we let x equal zero. The left side of this equation would be zero, and the power series would also be equal to zero, 
and therefore c equals zero. So now we know that our function f of x, which equals two x times natural log of the quantity one plus x, is equal to the power series, where we have the summation from n equals zero to infinity of two times negative one raised to the power of n times x raised to the power of n plus two divided by the quantity n plus one. And now we'll generate the first several terms of our power series to find the coefficients for our question. So notice when n is zero, we'd have two times one times x to the second, or two x to the second divided by one. When n is one, notice the term is negative, so we have minus two times x to the third divided by two plus when n is two, we have two times one, that's two x to the fourth divided by three. So far we have the term when n equals zero, n equals one, and n equals two. Notice how this is a degree four term, and going back to our question, we need to find the coefficients up until the degree six term. So to continue to find the terms for n equals three and n equals four. Notice when n is three, the term is negative, so we have minus two times x to the fifth divided by four. And then finally when n is four, the term is positive, so we have plus two times x to the sixth divided by five. And of course this continues. Let's go and simplify this. We have two x to the second minus x to the third plus two-thirds x to the fourth minus two-fourths or one-half x to the fifth and then finally plus two-fifths x to the sixth. Which means c sub two would be two, c sub three would be negative one, C sub four is two thirds, C sub five is negative one half, and C sub six is two fifths. Let's go ahead and record this. Again, C sub two is equal to two, C sub three is equal to negative one, C sub four is equal to two thirds, C sub five is equal to negative one half, and C sub six is equal to two fifths. Now we still have to find the radius of convergence Looking at the integral here, notice how the common ratio r is equal to negative x, which means the power series will converge when the absolute value of negative x is less than one. If it's helpful, we can think of this as the absolute value of negative one x less than one. And since the absolute value of negative one is one, this is equivalent to the absolute value of x is less than one, and therefore the radius of convergence is one. This also tells us that the interval of convergence would be the open interval from negative one to positive one. Now before we go, let's compare the graph of the given function and the graph of the function using the first five terms of this power series, which would be called a Maclaurin polynomial since it is centered at x equals zero. The original function is graphed here in blue and the polynomial function using the terms from the power series is graphed here in red. Notice around x equals zero, where the power series is centered, the red function is an excellent representation of the given blue function. I hope you found this helpful.